stuff. You need a title for this message. Zoom, you can, Zoom family, you can say this out loud or put it in the chat. For those in house, I want you to look at someone. So find someone to look at and repeat after me. Say, neighbor, I need you to speak life. Look at someone else. Find someone else to look at. And I want you to say, neighbor, speak life. All right. The title of the message is Speak Life. And now that we can prepare for this message, I invite you to join me in the word of prayer as we get into this word. Let's pray. Oh, God, we come to this time where we come to hear from you. I'm just a vessel that's willing to be used. So, God, let open our heart, open our ears, help us be able to receive what you have in store for us. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. And, God, help us learn how we can speak life. Help us be able to speak life in the situations where we feel all hope is lost. But most importantly, Lord God, let us always be reminded that you've given us the words of life. So that way, we are able to press forward no matter what. Have your way in this time. In your name we do pray, and the people of God say, amen. One of my favorite songs that I love to listen to is go by Joe Pace and the Colorado Mass Choir. And it's a song called Speak Life. In the chorus, it just says, speak life to it. Speak life through it. Knowing God's not a man that he should lie. Just hold on to it. Just go on through it. To every dry bone in your valley, just speak life. Now, when I love this song, it's because it helped encourage me in times when I feel like all hope is lost. And just wondering, by a show of hands, how many people feel that when you think about life overall, it's easy. It's like a walk of cake. It's easy. How many people feel like life is easy overall? Okay. Okay, I got one. All right, amen. I love it. Amen on Zoom. Do any of y'all feel like life is easy? Okay. Now, by a show of hands, how many people say life is tough? <laughs> okay. For me, I like to say sometimes life is ghetto. <laughs> but overall, we all have some highs in life and be able to press forward, but we also got things in life where it is tough. And I'll be like, God, when I came into this world, I didn't sign up for this. This was not in the contract or the agreement that I signed when I came out of my mama's womb, okay? I need you to talk to my lawyer and renegotiate this agreement, okay? Cool. But the one thing that is constant throughout across the board is that we always need to speak life. What do I need to say that? Is that we always need to have some words to give us encouragement to be able to press forward when life gives us challenges. And when I look at this text, I see a word of encouragement for us, not only for the people of Israel, but for all of us here. How so? Let's dive in. So for background, we are in the book of Ezekiel, named after prophet Ezekiel, who name means may God strengthen. And he lived during the time when the Judeans were in exiles in Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar. And Ezekiel, like other prophets, was called to speak a word to the people because Ezekiel stressed that it was due to people's lack of faithfulness towards God. That's why they were put in exile. And, got, and we find ourselves here in chapter 37 because last week we saw in chapter 36 that God told the people of Israel, it's time for you to come home. I'm going to restore the land. I'm going to restore the cities. I'm going to restore vegetation. And we find ourselves coming from there to where Ezekiel was in the text, got carried away from the Lord and brought over here to a valley full of dead bones. And we learned that these bones were dry. And when I say dry, I mean dry, okay? And when it comes to these bones, I can only imagine what Ezekiel's reaction could have been being brought from being told we're going to be in a luscious land to a whole entire valley of bones. I don't know if anybody will be feeling comfortable being in a room full of bones. I know for me, I would not. But one of the things is that in the midst of all this, God asked him a question. Son of man, can these bones? Becoming living people again. 
Now, when God asks a question, be cautious on your answer <laughs> because there's many ways Ezekiel could have answered. Ezekiel could have said, yeah, of course. But then he might have been seen, I might be seen a presumptuous. But then Ezekiel said, nah, not at all. Then he could be looking like, okay, I'm limiting God's power. So how should I answer? We see that Ezekiel said, oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know the answer to that question. Ezekiel knew that he didn't know the answer. So he humbled himself and told God, you know the answer. And one thing is that why I appreciate the way that Ezekiel humbled himself, because sometimes when we get questions, sometimes the best answer for the question is just saying, you know. Because sometimes the, question, the answer to that question lies within us. And we just need to wait and not give a quick response. And from Ezekiel's answer, God told Ezekiel to prophesy to the dead bones and tell them how they will be brought back to life. And so he prophesied to their bones. And there was a way he prophesied. He spoke the words of life that God gave him. Another way I feel like he could have prophesied was says, well, your toe bone connected to your foot bone and your foot bone connected to your heel bone and your heel bone connected to your ankle bone and your ankle bone connected to your leg bone and your leg bone connected to your knee bone and your knee bone connected to your thigh bone and your thigh bone connected to your hip bone and your hip bone connected to your back bone and the back bone connected to your shoulder bone and the shoulder bone connected to your neck bone and the neck bone connected to your head bone. Now hear the word of the Lord. So, them bones, them bones, them dry bones. So, he prophesied to the words. <laughs> and when he gave the words to the bones, you got all the bones that came together. And not only did these bones come together, but also you got muscle, you got tendon, you got flesh. They all came together, and they went from being a valley of just dry bones to now a valley of human beings. But... There's only one issue, though. They were brought back to life, but they didn't have life in them. They were brought back to life. You got human flesh, we got everything together. But there was no life in them. They had no breath. They had no spirit in them. So God told Ezekiel, I need you to prophesy again. I need you to tell the four winds to breathe the breath of life into these bodies and telling them to live again because first you had a body full of dry bones. Then you went from having a body full of dry bones to a valley full of bodies. They had no life. They're dead. I don't think I want to be in a room full of, I thought bones were worse. Now we got a body of all bodies with flesh and dead, no life in them. Mm, no. I don't want to be in that. So, yes, I will be the one to be like, oh, yeah, we're going to speak life into these, but I'm also going to try my best not to be scared because I'm going to be like, this is not the walking dead. <laughs> so, we're going to speak life into these bones. And so, Ezekiel used the words that God told him to speak life, a.k.a. I'm going to give you the Hebrew word of the day. Everybody say, ruach. Ruach. The ruach which is also known as breath, which is also known as spirit. So God told Ezekiel, tell the four winds to breathe the spirit back into these bodies, back into these bones. And that's what happened. And they were brought back to life. And what God told Ezekiel was to tell the people, these dry bones right here, they represent y'all. Because... Y'all felt like y'all was hopeless. Y'all felt like y'all was useless. Y'all felt like y'all was lifeless. But I came here to tell you to speak life and for you to get back up because I need you to live. Because at the end of the day, I still got life in you. I still got purpose for you. I need you to live. Now, for me, seeing this passage, it can be a powerful one because in this passage, there's many times in our lives in which we can be like those dry bones when we feel like all hope is lost, when we feel that there's nothing that we can do. But in this passage right here, I see a few points that I want us to resonate with, and I feel like God is telling us. 
The first point is this. I see in this passage that God is telling you and I to speak life because words have power. We need to speak life because words have power. Now, I know we all grew up hearing this saying, and y'all can finish it off for me. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but what? That's a lie from the pit of hell. <laughs> Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Lies! <laughs> because words do hurt. Words do hurt. And understand that if we look in the scripture, we get power, we get many references when it comes to our tongue. You don't believe me? Let me give you a few passages. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. One of my favorite passages, which I feel like God brought this word for me. James chapter 3, verses 8 to 10. But no human being can tame the tongue. It's this restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we praise the Lord God our Father, and also with it, we curse human beings who've been made in God's likeness. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and my sisters, these things, might not, these things ought not to be so. And Luke 45, the good person out of the good treasure of their heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we need to truly watch what we say. But we also need to learn how we need to speak life and encourage one another. This is why I feel like Paul gave us the scripture in Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up at this the occasion that might give grace to those who hear. God gave Ezekiel the words to speak life to these bones, and God is encouraging us, encouraging you and I to speak life into the situations when we feel that all hope is lost. This, and when we hear, we not only are we called to speak life because words have power, this brings me into my second point, which is this, that God's word still has power. That God's word still has power. Because sometimes we can neglect, we can underestimate, we can forget that the scriptures has power, and that sometimes the word is rhema, which is living. Because if I go into scripture, John chapter 1, verses 1 to 4 says this, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It was with God in the beginning. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that has been made from the beginning in this passage, even to Genesis. When you see God create the world, all that God did was speak. God, we didn't see no instruments. We didn't see no tools. We didn't even see no hands. All we seen was that God spoke the words, and it came to life. When Jesus was fighting against Satan in the wilderness, all that Jesus said was, it is written. That's why I even go back to 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 to 17, which says this, All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the person of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. There's power in the Word and the Scriptures because, again, the Scripture is known to be in that rhema word, also being that life. And trust when I say that there's many times in my life in which I had to speak God's word to give me encouragement and to help me be able to move forward and find a hope to keep pressing. Because we're in October. When Halloween comes at 3.45 p.m., it will mark six years for me when I was diagnosed with HIV. When I got this diagnosis of HIV, my mom, my grandma could testify, I was weak. My body was weak. I was crawling. It wasn't until the help of my pastor at the time, Reverend Gloria Roche Thomas, I crawled over to Canford because my body was so weak. And I said, I need help because my doctor told me that I couldn't see a specialist until after Thanksgiving. Reverend Thomas called someone from the Minnesota AIDS line, and I was able to get the help the next day. 
When they saw me, I was rushed all the way over to the ICU at Abbott Northwestern, and they told me that they caught it early, but I had over 10 million viruses in my body. I had over 10 million viruses in my body, and I literally felt that all hope was lost. I felt like God could not use me anymore. I felt like I disappointed God, and that God, like, is everything is over. But there was a chaplain who was there who gave me the scripture. And Psalm 118 gave me life, particularly verse 17, which says this, I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. That brought me back up to life, but it also encouraged me to keep pressing no matter what, because even I prayed to God and told God, hey, God, let me be able to get out of this. And when I go to the doctor's office and anything that I do, I want to be able to point it back to you and say, that's my God for you. When I should have been undetectable in three to six months, God did it in two. A lot of things in my immune system, the doctor was dumbfounded, and all I was able to say was that, that's my God for you. But most importantly, I spoke the word into my life. And when I spoke God's word into my life, not only did it give me the encouragement to press forward, but also seeing God be able to use the word to transform me from the inside out. Again, we need to use the word and we need to speak life into our situations when we feel that all hope is lost. That's why a lot of times in the mornings we say some affirmations. Sometimes in the mornings we say declarations to be able for us to be pressing forward. Here's a few declarations I could give you just from the scriptures. Psalm 139 verse 14. I will praise God for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Another one, Deuteronomy 31:16. I am strong and courageous. I will not be afraid of anyone, for the Lord my God goes with me. God will not fail me nor forsake me. Even 2 Timothy 1.7, God did not give me a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And even Matthew 19.26, with God, all things are possible. The Word has life. The Word has still has power, and we need to declare sometimes the word over our lives to not only give us encouragement, but also to sometimes transform the situation. God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel responded, oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. This question just isn't for Ezekiel. That question is for each every single one of us. Can the areas in our lives that seems lifeless and desolate experience a revival? Can I shadow dream can I shatter dreams, our broken relationships and lost opportunities be infused with life once more? Because understand that our lives are a tapestry of experiences woven with threads of joy, sorrow, victory, and defeat. But in the tapestry of life, we often encounter desolate valleys filled with dry bones. But can we, like Ezekiel, trust in God's power to breathe life into these dry bones? Can we believe that God can resurrect what seems beyond repair? As I close, I hope that we will take the time to reflect on our own situation and the challenges that we face, and that we consider this. What are the dry bones in our life that needs the breath of God? What are the situations, the relationships, or dreams that needs God's rejuvenating touch? And are we willing to trust God and prophesy life into those situations and to those areas? Because remember, our words hold him as power. And the words of God especially has the power to transform us. Let each and every single one of us, I pray and I encourage each and every single one of you to speak life into your circumstances and into the lives of those around us. Let us declare God's promises with unwavering faith, for God's word is a wellspring of life and hope. So again, speak life. Amen? Let's pray.